morning, good morning, good morning, abide in faith. Go taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. We thank God for blessing us to make it out today. We ask that you keep us in your prayers as we go before the Lord to render praise. Josh, for 
that ministry of, of song music and I thank God so much this morning. Great is the Lord's faithfulness. Amen. How many know he's been faithful to you? Come on, clap all hands and give God praise. Come on, stand to your feet if you know he's been great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and praise him and bless him. Great is his faithfulness. We give you glory, Lord. We give you praise. Great is your faithfulness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please remain standing. God, we glorify you. We praise you in the name. God, we magnify your name. For you have been faithful unto us and we thank you for it and we bless you for it for the life we have now and the life we now live in this flesh we thank you for it and father we pray you bless the services this morning that you would move like never before as you pour out your spirit upon each and every one of us Come against the works of the devil. We bind every wicked thought today, O oh Lord. Every manifestation of the enemy, we come against it in the name of Jesus. As you move this morning and settle in the midst of us, O oh God. As you answer the prayers that are in the air this morning, that come from our hearts this day, O oh Lord. As you move among those that are, are sick this day, O oh God. That you touch and heal and restore and revive this morning as you lift the bowls of the burden down this morning stir inside of them I pray in the name of Jesus we call on you Lord you are our Father and we thank you so much and we bless you let this be a fresh start and a new beginning for us oh Lord let this day be a, a fresh start and a, a, a new beginning for us, oh God. Hallelujah. As we now, Lord, walk in the way of holiness and righteousness, that pathway, oh God. We bless you. We praise you. We thank you today, oh Lord. We lift our hands and we say, Lord, you've been good to us. You have been good to us. You have been good to us. Hallelujah. You have been good to us. We glorify you. We magnify your name, O oh Lord. If you're watching this day virtually, just lift those hands and tell it, Lord, you've been good to us. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Make it personal. You've been good to me. Hallelujah. We give you praise. Father, we pray that you would let your anointing settle where we are today, O oh Lord. Let your angels come and minister to us this morning, O oh Father. And let your will be done. I thank you and I pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. You can have your seats. Praise Him and bless Him. And I'm not going to hold you long, but just long enough to bless you. Hallelujah. As that song continues to resonate inside uh, of our spirit, great is thy faithfulness. Bless His name. Bless His name. It's truly a blessing to be in the house of God. And thank God so much to be in the land of the living. Amen. Amen. And we pray that God will bless you and strengthen you today. As I welcome those that are watching virtually. God bless each and every one of you today. Um, put your prayers in the air. Continue to believe God to turn favorably in your direction. I'm Pastor John Cowart. Just happened to be the senior pastor of the Abiding Faith Christian Church. Well, Amen. And I praise him for it. I bless him for it. Amen. He's raised me up from a little boy well, all the way to where I am right now as a man of God. And I give him praise. I give him thanks this morning. Amen. So um, 
just want to, uh, I thought about this today, and, and, and um, I, I had a couple of friends uh, back in probably fourth or fifth grade, fourth grade I think it was, um, Roger and Malachi. They were geniuses. They were the, two of the smartest young men I, I'd ever run into. Um, and uh, these two young men taught me how to play chess. And in teaching me how to play chess, uh, you know, in, in chess, you're, you're thinking two or three moves before your um, opponent makes their move, all right? You've already got it in your mind. Very methodical. I mean, these young brothers really were into it. And I thank God so much because it transferred into how I even would do things. I would think, put a lot of thought before I would just rush into something. Um, and, and I didn't realize until later on how I, I, I kind of slowed things down and I would think things through. And I bless God for those brothers that, that shared with me and taught me how to play chess. They were good, they were whiz, a whiz at, at, at playing chess. Um, they always won their matches, all right? But with me, um, nah, not as good as they were, but I, I praise God for the, um, I guess, the, the wisdom that came in learning how to, uh, to play chess. And I'll say this to all of you, and they, uh, my son's first grade teachers said this to us, teach your children to play chess. Teach them how to play chess. Helps with their, their reasoning, their decision making, but teach your children how to play chess. You'll see how, how, uh, how they will develop in making those decisions and taking their time and so many other good, good things that, that come from uh, learning how to play chess. And if you are old, you can learn how to play chess as well. Amen, praise God, bless his name. Today I'm, I'm going to uh, preach this word, uh, share this word with you. Uh, the title, It's Time, for recovery. It's time for recovery. Now I got a couple of chapters I'm going to share with you, but I, I thought about some synonyms for recovery, mm -hmm. recapture, uh, recoupment, repossession, retreat, retrieval, and then I thought about another word, reposition. Amen. When we talk about recovery, you know, the devil entered Judas's heart during the Last Supper. That was some boldness. Amen. That was some boldness. It, it, the scripture says in John 13, 2, during the supper, the devil, having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to betray him. So I always say this. Guard your heart. Amen. For uh, the scriptures say in, in Proverbs 4, 23, for out of that heart come the issues of life. Guard your heart. It's got to protect your heart. Just as sure as you came to church today, it didn't say that the enemy wasn't going to come with you. So you guard your heart. If he was bold enough to set himself up in, in, in the Last Supper, and into Judas's heart. Don't you think he'll be bold enough to come and sit next to you right here in church and try to persuade you to do something against the will of God? All right now. Yeah. Yeah. Watch those thoughts when they come not from God, but from the enemy. And you've got to know how to deflect them, rebuke them, bind them. Amen. You don't want anything to interfere with the direction that God wants you to go. And I just wanted to share that little exhortation. Praise God. It's time for recovery. I want you to look in the book of Hosea. I said, uh, and I gave them a different scripture, but it's Hosea the seventh chapter. I apologize. Oh, Hosea the seventh chapter. In Hosea, we find what you might call pure negligence concerning um, Ephraim, the children of Israel, Ephraim being from the northern tribe. But we find that they have neglected God altogether. 
I don't know if you've ever been like that, where you have neglected God. And he becomes not a first thought, but a second thought. Amen. I've been there, but I thank God so much for deliverance. Amen. A first thought is where we want to have him at all times. Our first thought. Our first thought. Our first thought. Praise God. So in the book of Hosea, the seventh chapter, let me read what it says. I want to, I want to read this first verse to you. Um, if you have it, you can turn to it. It says, when I would heal Israel, the iniquity of Ephraim is uncovered and the evil deeds of Samaria, for they deal falsely. The thief enters in, bandits raid outside, and they do not consider in their hearts that I remember all their wickedness. Reading from Hosea 7 chapter. He said, they don't remember. God remembers all of our wickedness. All of the things that we think we have gotten by with. He told them, he said, that I remember all their wickedness. Their deeds are all around them. They are before my face. Their wickedness, they make glad they make the king glad. Amen. That's that's the workings of the enemy. Sometimes we don't recognize and we don't remember. God remembers all of our wickedness. Praise God. I want to take you to the, the seventh verse. Ephraim has become where. Well, I'm going to read this verse. It says, all of their kings have fallen. None of them calls on me. Ephraim mixes himself with nations. Ephraim has become a cake not turned. Strangers devour his strength, yet he does not know it. Now, that was something that really stuck with me. Ephraim has become a, a, a cake not turn. Let me tell you what about this cake. Not turn. And, I, and I'm going to. Ephraim has become a half baked cake. A half baked cake. Incapable of being turned over to cook. And they, they, they describe the, the half baked cake like a pancake. On the bottom side, it's cooked. But on the flip side, it's still kind of like. Um, raw or, 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 or moist, not ready. And that was the state that they were in. Ephraim had become like a half-baked cake, unturned cake, completely, it's like a pancake. So the Bible says that, uh, or the, the commentary says, they end up being useless. How would you like for your mom or your husband or your wife, whoever cooks in the family, to serve you a pancake that's cooked on one side and uncooked on the other side. You look at them like they're crazy. Mom, I can't eat that. Honey, I can't eat that. That's how their lives were. That's how they served God. That's how they thought that they were presenting one way, but you can't serve God you know, one way you're, you're all right, you're cooked on one side, but on the other side, on the other days, you want to do what you want to do. It was an uncooked. And the Bible says that their lives ended up being useless. That's one way you can look at it, interpret, interpret it. If you are not fully divested in God, your life is useless. Every one of us should know that there is purpose as we as we serve God. We we have a moral obligation to serve him and to give our best to him. But when we are not fulfilling that purpose, praise God, 
When we are not fulfilling why God called us and why he changed us and saved us and, and, and filled us with his spirit. When we are not fulfilling the purpose of God, we become useless. God doesn't want us to be useless in the kingdom of God. How many want to be a, a vessel uh, that he can depend on? Amen. Amen. How many want to be a, a vessel that he can, he can call and say, you know, do this, do that. I and mean, you're ready to do, you're ready for whatever the, the call might be. We don't want to be useless. Ephraim had become that cake that, that had not been unturned. And, and I'm going to go back to the scripture. It says, strangers devour his strength. Yet he does not know it. Now that's when you're really out there. And you don't realize that someone has devoured and taken your strength. You are the last one to figure out that something's not right. Strangers devoured their, their strength. Uh, gray hairs also a sprinkle on him. Yet he does not know it. Now that's something to think about. Gray hairs. And so into what you're doing, you're not even seeing that the gray hair is all over you because in this particular case, they are serving idols. All right. It's almost like the, 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 the old person who believes or still tries to be young and doesn't realize, slow down. All right. Gray hair all over. Uh -huh. And they didn't even realize it. That's how caught up. That they were. Amen. Amen. I realize my grave. Amen. <laughs> I realize my grave. But they, he said they don't even know it. Though the pride of Israel testifies against him. Yet they have not returned to the Lord their God. Nor have they sought him. For all this. So Ephraim has become like a silly dove. Without sense. Confused. A silly, you know, if you're flying, you're, you're going back. A silly dove without sense. That's confusion for church. That's when you are confused. Without sense. They call to Egypt. They go to Assyria. And when they go, I will spread my net over them. I will bring them down like birds of the sky. They're going everywhere else. But where they should be going, where they should be going. Yeah. They're going to Egypt, they're going. But he said, when they go, I'm going to put my net over them. I'm going to bring them down. I will chastise them in accordance with the proclamation to their assembly. Woe to them, for they have strayed from me. Mm -hmm. Destruction is theirs, for they have rebelled against me. Mm -hmm. I would redeem them. But they speak lies against me. This is where you find it. I mean, talking about you've lost your way. Why would you speak lies against the very one that has helped you? They speak lies against me. And, I'm the, and, and God is saying, I'm the very one that has helped them. He says... Destruction is theirs for they have rebelled against me. I would, I would redeem them, but they speak lies against me. And they do not cry to me from their heart when they wail on their beds. You would think that if you were in trouble, you talk to the Lord. Yeah. He said they don't even talk to me when they're on their beds. For the sake of grain and new wine, they assemble themselves. What God may have for them. They turn away from me, although I train and I strengthen their arms, yet they devised evil against me. They turn not upward. They are like a deceit, a deceitful bow, a, a, a deceitful bow. You think that you, your bow is supposed to be sturdy, right? They are like a deceitful bow. And what that, what that was saying is Israel was missing the mark. Couldn't depend on it. Well, missing the mark. Everything they should have been doing, should have been doing, they were not doing. Missing the mark. Amen. And sometimes we find ourselves, we should be dependable, but we're not sturdy, and we are missing the mark where God wants and what he expects of us. 
Their princes will fall by the sword because of the insolence of their tongue. This will be their derision in the land of Egypt. It's going to take them off. It is time for recovery. Bishop asked a question yesterday. He said, how much of the world still owns us? I don't know if it was yesterday or sometime we were talking. How much of the world still owns you? Still controls you? All of your habits. How much of the world? Or, you know, and, and, and we go back to Romans 12. It says, be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be not conformed, but be transformed. So how much of the world has still got a grip on you? And a lot of times you don't realize that when you get saved, you may not be totally clean or free of all the things. You bring a lot of that stuff with you. And you need God to what? Thoroughly wash you and purge you and cleanse you. We bring some of those things. God hasn't, you know, uh, old James Cleveland song, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. I got some stuff that God needs to what? Continue to chisel and work out of me. And so we don't realize that we bring stuff with us. And God has to cleanse us. We bring those attitudes, nasty attitudes. We bring that, that, that position or disposition that we, that we just don't like somebody when we see them. Uh, I just don't like, well, what do they do? That's from your old ways. Right Amen. And old things are what should what pass away. We're supposed to be new, but God's still working on Amen. you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. Amen. Amen. It's time for recovery, church. Yes. Israel did not recognize that it's not right. They didn't recognize, they didn't know it, that they had lost that strength. They didn't realize it. Recognize when you are in a different place spiritually. All right. Recognize when you are saying things you normally wouldn't say. Yeah. Recognize it. Don't be the last one to figure out, oh, I just cursed. Recognize Amen. when you're off track and you're not where you should be. All right. Recognize Israel or Ephraim had lost their way, had settled back, dealing still with idols. Where's your fight? Where is your fight? You know, that's what I would say to them if I could talk. Where is your fight? You know, sometimes we get too comfortable in that idle mind. Uh, the idle mind is the devil's workshop. Workshop. We get too comfortable. And we need to know that I need to keep fighting. <clears throat> because I, I came down to God and told him, save me. I gave the, the preacher my hand, God my heart. I thought it was all over. I didn't have to work hard anymore. No, you, you have to continue to, to fight the good fight. Amen? Amen. Ephraim had walked away outside of the will of God and did not recognize how far off they had gotten and mixed themselves among others. And they had become that cake unturned and did not realize I'm not, I'm not ready. I'm not where I should be. It is important that you remind yourself every day that I have a purpose and, as I said, a moral duty and an obligation to serve God. You don't want to take, chan take chances and say, you know, I, I'll, I, I'm good, I'm good. No, no, no. Every day, remind yourself. You wake up with purpose in mind. Remind yourself. Amen. Remind yourself. Uh, this is how God keeps all of us on track when we are constantly reminding ourselves of our duty and our obligation to him, to the kingdom of God. It's all right. You're not crazy because you're reminding yourself. 
you just you, you're doing it because you are also you're consecrating yourself to God as we learned yesterday how important it is to consecrate and humble yourself as well amen, amen. you don't want to always say that I, I'm I'm I got this together and I got my life together now humble yourself amen. the Bible even tells us to take heed when you think that you got it all together when you think you stand lest you fall lest you take your eyes off of him and you find yourself in a downward spiral take heed amen it's important for you to realize that and I believe that that God wants the best for us amen. I believe God wants the best for us sometimes we have to, to understand uh, or, or say do we want the best for ourselves well, because God is always working to make sure that we uh, we have the best. Amen. And we have to remind ourselves. Is that something that I still want? Yeah, you should be. It should be. It should be. Realize that. Amen. I realize that I want to take you to uh, another scripture. From um, the book of Matthew. Book of Matthew. Bible right quick. Matthew, just the Bible. Praise God. Amen. In Matthew 23. Matthew 23, 23, it says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you tithe mint and deal, uh, uh, you tithe mint and deal and cumin and cumin, and have neglected the weightiest provisions of the law. The weightiest provisions of the law being justice and mercy. You are focusing on the the small things, the little things. He said you tithe in that and see, okay, I'm supposed to get ten percent of this. But he said you are neglecting the weightier things, which is justice and mercy and faithfulness. But these are the things that you should have done without neglecting the others. You blind guides who strain out a net and swallow a camel. And so they were a, a, a little, uh, I guess, Commentary, you, you strain out the net and you find that you want to take this little bug that flew into your, your, your cup of tea. You strain out the net and you swallow a camel. Mm -hmm. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and of the dish. But inside they are full of robbery and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup well. and, of, and of the dish so that the outside of it may become clean also. You look at the little things when you should be paying attention to the weightier things. Mercy and justice and, and faithfulness. And then there's this thing where you you clean the outside. All right. But there's still some work that needs to be done on the inside. On the inside. And he's telling the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees because these are the, the, the learned men. These are the, these are the ones that are supposed to have it all together. You got the outside of that dish. Real nice and clean. But on the inside, 
It's dirty. And church, we don't want to live like that. We may present ourselves as righteous on the outside. Because we can dress the part. Amen. But a, a false heart knows already what a false face already is trying to put out there. And we must find ourselves. The Bible says that the heart above all things is desperately wicked. Who can know it? The inside needs some work. You can smile, but on the inside, there's a lot of negative things on the inside of your, your, your mind and your body, your heart. Amen? And you got to be very careful. It's time for recovery. It's time for recovery. Let me read this last one that, that it says. It says, 27, it says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside appear beautiful, but inside full of dead men's bones and uncleanness. So you too outwardly appear righteous to men, but inwardly, you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. It's time for recovery. You know, the pandemic, and we've been talking about it for the last three years now. It hasn't done people a favor in that people use excuses why well, I can't get close to God because I'm, 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 I'm this and I'm, you know, the, the, the pandemic should never be a reason why we don't have a relationship with God. Amen. Why we are not in church. The pandemic should be why, I, you, you, well, it's because of pandemic that I don't really feel that. No, no, no. We have to remind ourselves every day. Your relationship with Christ is so important. Amen. Amen. And the reason I say it's time for recovery because we sometimes, like I said earlier, in Israel, they, they were the last ones to realize that they had gotten so far off. There was no urgency to serve God. Like for some people, there's no urgency to be in, the, uh, in church under the anointing. There's no urgency to pick up your Bible because it's the pandemic's fault. No, it's not. Amen. This is the day and the age and the time that you've got to know God. Amen. If anything else comes up, much worse than what we have experienced. Israel went through the, the wilderness for 40 years. Can we take 40 years? Come on now. Three years is about to drive a lot of us back. Hold on to your sanity. Yes. But understand your relationship with God. Yes. Your, that intimate talk with him and that need to be with him is so important. It is vital yes. to your existence. Yes. Yes. To your continued growth. Like I told you last uh, service, that, that there, that's that relocation. Amen. That we want to be spiritually finding ourselves. That's where I reside. I don't take junk into my house. Amen. I don't take nonsense, drama into the, I, I'm in that spiritual relocation right now. And know where you reside. Know where you are located with him. That's why that relationship with Jesus Christ is so important. I don't even want to think about losing that relationship. Like David prayed, he said, please don't take your holiness. I don't want to even go there. Yeah, come on now. I, don't want to, I don't want the thought to enter my mind. I want to always be consistent. How many know that God has delivered you? Amen. You know, you know you've been delivered. You know, and, and, and the thought that going backwards or going back to that, I know I don't want, I don't want that. I, he's delivered me. It, it's good. It, it continues to get better every day. And I thank God where I am right now. Because a lot, a long time ago, or oh, maybe five or six years ago, I don't want to go back there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I'm meeting right now the Lord that, that loves me and I want to give my best to Him. I always say this, I owe so much to Him. Amen. I owe so much to Him. I, I'm not looking for God to give me anything. I'm not looking for a, a brand new house, a brand new car. I'm not looking for that. I owe my life to Him. Amen. I was on my way to hell. Amen. And I realize that. I know that. That my life was... Utterly dis in, in, uh, a destructive mode. I know that. That's why I owe so much to him. And I'm trying to do everything I can. Don't want to be like I mean, Ephraim was. And, and they didn't realize that they had gotten so far off. I want to always know where I stand with God. Yes. You want to always know where you stand. If you're lukewarm, then you need help. Amen. You don't want to be lukewarm. You don't want to be cold. But you want to know where you stand with them. It's time for recovery. And I say that. And be proactive. Don't be reactive. Be proactive in your walk with God. In your, your life with the Lord. Don't, don't wait till the last minute. Don't wait till the last minute to run out and say, Oh Lord. No. Be proactive. Seek him now while he may be found. Call upon him. The Bible says while he is what? He's near. Amen. That's not my testimony. Calling on him when I get in trouble. You know, whatever, you know, you don't, don't let that be your testimony. The only time you call on him is when you're in trouble. Call upon him now while he's near you. Praise God. Praise God. Time for recovery time for recovery amen. Amen. amen praise god and before we we, we close I, I i meant to give you my my black history um and i, I think this this is this is all a part uh, this is a letter from a young man that um that came and watched us in service uh, back in 2017 uh he was kind of like uh, the life of the party, if, if you might say, on the front row. He sat on the front row, a little short man, and um, always smiling and, and looked like he always was trying to get other people to smile too. But uh, he was he was he was a, he was interesting in that how he um, how he presented himself, and I just really admire. But he wrote the other day. Um, he's in a whole different institution. But um, I reason I thank God for him because I believe that this is black history when we when we serve and we help our brothers and our sisters that are incarcerated. I mean, that's a part of our history. Amen. But I, I praise God. I brought his letter here because I just want to be reminded uh, of his name is Vincent of, of what God has done for us as a church in, in um, giving ourselves to the men and women that are incarcerated. And I praise God for that. I still have several people that write me from the prisons and I have to be um, um, let's say not have to be but I'm always in that state of, of trying to con uh, my service to them although we physically can't get to the prisons but I praise God for it well, I want to I share another black history this is a, a, I, I printed this out I don't know if you've ever read the book The Warmth of Other Sons excellent book excellent book um, Isabel Wilkerson wrote this book. And let me just share a little bit about Isabel Wilkerson. Um, she's a, a Howard University graduate. I'm pretty sure that um, Minister O'Caffer and, and Brother O'Caffer would appreciate that. They love, that's their alma mater. Um, but Isabel Wilkerson is an American journalist and author of The Warmth of Other Sons. She was the first African-American woman uh, um, to receive or win a Pulitzer, a Pulitzer uh, Prize in journalism. Um, share some other things about this young lady. Uh, in, in her career, uh, she's worked as uh, the uh, chief, uh, well, the Chicago Bureau Chief of the New York Times. She became the first woman of heritage, as I said, for the Pulitzer Prize. Uh, she's done so many wonderful things. Uh, she's also been uh, a professor at Emory University. She's been a professor at Princeton um, University. And she's uh, an amazing writer, author, 
uh, professor of journalism. Uh, she's wonderful. So if you haven't had a chance to read it, get it. The Warmth of Other Suns. Um, I, I, I was introduced to this book by a journalist. He's a retired journalist, and he feeds me books. He, don't, he doesn't know how much he helps me. But he finds, he reads the books, and he says, oh, you'll like this one. Read this one. Um, but he's a retired professor from UF uh, that has really blessed me. And uh, he, this is the reason why I, I was able to read this book, The Warmth of Other Sons. It, um, the historical is all the way back to um, Eustis, you know, right up in uh, the Umatilla area where uh, my brother John Green is, is from. But it is an amazing, if you like history, all right, and you want to get a good um, idea of what happened way back in the day and all the things. This is a, it's also talking about the Great Migration, where the people left the South and moved to um, the North. When they moved to Chicago and New York, they left Mississippi and Florida and Alabama. Uh, they were moving to, to get away from the, um, the Jim Crow and all the other things. But uh, amazing what this young lady has done. Amen. And I praise God for it. But that's my black history uh, fact uh, or that I wanted to share with you. Read that book, The Warmth of Other Sons. Good book, good book. Uh, especially if you like history. Praise God. It's time for recovery, church. Let's all stand for prayer. Don't be the last one to find out or recognize that you are really off. Time for recovery. That's just an example. That's not saying that that's your testimony. But it's almost like what I say. It helps me to understand a little more of why I have to be guarded and why I can't just take life for granted. Well, I'm going to always be a preacher. I'm going to always be saved. You better believe I'm going to find myself in prayer all the time as much as I have the, the spirit, the will. You're going to find me in prayer because I'm not going to take for granted that I have it all together. Yeah. <clears throat> Old song says we've come this far by faith. I'm leaning on the Lord. Yes. We've come this far by faith. Put your prayer request in the air. Yes. If it's been a, a rocky road for you lately, and maybe you have the pandemic diagnosis of, of and, and you're sick because you have not kept your moral obligation and duty to keep the Lord first, that purpose. And you're weak. If you're going back to some of your old ways, it's time for recovery. Just put your prayer request in the air. We don't want to be like the scribes, the Pharisees. Paid attention to the outside, but neglected the weightier things to check the inside. As I preached last Sunday, establishing truth on the inside. Father God, we praise you and we bless you and we thank you this morning. Thank you so much, Lord, for information that we can use to guide and direct our, our life in you. We don't want to be like Ephraim. Last to find out that they are so far off. But I pray now, Lord, you keep us attentive so we'll hear your voice. We won't pretend. We'll be real on the inside and outside. Father, stretch forth your hands upon each and every one of us and 
those that are watching virtually this morning and strengthen us now Lord as a gathered body of Christ strengthen us so God we'll know where we stand in you oh Lord strengthen us so we'll know where we're going in you oh God manifest that that love on the inside crowd out all the the rude behavior and the negative things crowd and drive all those things out of us no room for it Lord we bless you and we praise you as we give ourselves to you Lord as we turn our focus toward you today stir inside of us oh Lord Stir inside our hearts to be mindful and dutiful about being workers in the kingdom of God. The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. So whatever you have given and the talents, God, you've put inside of us, let us use every one of them for your glory, for your praise. As we consecrate our lives for you, Lord, as we submit ourselves to the will of God. Let the love abide all on the inside, oh God. Guided by that love. In the name of Jesus. If you're watching this morning, I want you to know that God loves you a whole lot. You see, I was a sinner in need of help. And he saved me. I wasn't as you see me now preaching. But I needed God's help. I was deep in sin. So he showed me love. And I want to show that love to you today. No matter what you're going through. No matter, as you might say, how bad you have been. The love of God from me in my heart for you. To love. No matter what situation or circumstance you may be in right now. Trust me. I love you and I want the best for you and for your life. throw me away but he drew me near to him and that's what I want for you today that God would love you and, and draw you through through my life through my testimony through the words that I preach that love I thank God for each and every one of you today and just tell the Lord I, I, I need you Lord Come into my life today. Save me. Free me. From all my excuses. Free me. From being negligent. Free me. Save me. Fill me with your spirit. It is time for recovery. That may mean I need to get stronger. That may mean I need to become more wise or knowledgeable concerning the scriptures. It's time for recovery. That may mean I need to continue my fasting and my prayer. If you have neglected any of those things that you once had a heart for, a desire for, it's time for recovery. It's time.
time for recovery. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for each and every one of us today. We pray, God, you keep moving to bless us, to be the men and women you want us to be, the young, young girls and young boys that you called us to be, that we can be now, Lord, our best at all times. Praise God. May God's blessing be upon you henceforth and forevermore. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. So I challenge every one of you today. What you're not doing or what you haven't done in a while, I want you to see yourself back on track that heart that God has touched and blessed you in giving of yourself see yourself back on track let the Lord guide you and direct you praise God amen, amen. you can give this morning you're watching us virtually you can give go to um, our website www.abidingfaithcc.org Hit the giving tab and give your tithe, give your offering. Uh, we we would love to have you as a, a part of our, our congregation. So you can give us a call, 352-372-0488. Um, Leave a, a prayer request or your name on our phone and we will be sure um, to uh, contact you. You can also send us uh, an email at abiding faith cc abiding fcc at gmail.com abiding fcc at gmail gmail.com send us a, 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 a note or a letter and if you would like to be a part of our church we welcome you amen god bless you have a wonderful day and enjoy jesus